Over the next couple videos, we are going to look at two sample tests. So we'll start with a two sample Z test and we're starting with independent samples and then we'll get to dependent samples. All right, so a two sample Z test is where our null hypothesis is comparing the average of two groups. And so we're making a statement about the two groups within the population. So for example, we could look at the difference in age between um, the average age of people in Calgary versus the average age of people in Edmonton. And we might have a null hypothesis that says there's no difference between the average age in Edmonton and the average age in Calgary. So the difference we could say would be equal to zero. An alternative hypothesis could be that it is not equal to zero. Okay, or we could be making a statement about how big the difference is and we could have it be directional. So we could have the average for one group minus the average for another group for the null hypothesis is greater than or equal to some number. And then the alternative would be less than some number. So you can have one or two tailed tests when you have the two sample tests because we're looking at the difference in some population parameter um, between the two groups. If we're doing a two sample Z test, then our test statistic looks like this. It looks at the difference between the two sample averages minus what we are predicting is the difference between the two population averages. And then we have a representation of the variability in the two groups within the population. So we have sigma one and sigma two, which are the standard deviations of the two groups in the population. So the assumption with a two sample Z test is the population standard deviations or variances are known, but they don't necessarily have to be equal. We will look at a two sample T test, one where we assume that the variability is equal and one where we assume the variability is different. So for this two sample Z test, we are assuming random sampling. So we our samples represent the population. We have a normal underlying population or at least a large enough sample size of the sampling distribution is normally distributed. That allows us to use Z. Population variances are known, but not necessarily equal, and that we have two independent samples. When it comes to two sample Z tests, you can find the corresponding confidence intervals. Just like we found confidence intervals for the one sample test by essentially rearranging the test statistic, you're doing the same thing when you look at a confidence interval for a two sample test. So essentially we're solving for the difference in the population parameters. And so we are rearranging the formula. So you can see here how the lower and upper bounds of the confidence interval are just pieces of this test statistic rearranged. Just like with any other test, you can have confidence intervals that are one sided to go with your alternative hypothesis that is one direction as well. So let's look at an example. So two manufacturers of sinus relief tablets, sinus and anti-drip, have made conflicting claims regarding the effectiveness of their tablets. Both claim to be the most effective at providing sinus relief. A private testing organization was hired to evaluate the two tablets. The testing company tried sinus on 100 sinus congestion sufferers and found that the average time to relief, so X bar one is 85. A sample in here N1 is 100. And then we found X bar two, a sample of 81 sinus congestion sufferers, N2 equals 81. Uh, had an average time to relief of 86.2 minutes. The mean time to relief, here we go. Assume that the population standard deviation of sinus and anti-drip are six and 6.8. So this is a standard deviation, a sigma, so six and 6.8. Does the evidence suggest that the two tablets provide different relief? Assume a significance level of 0.05. So start with your null and alternative hypothesis. And our alternative hypothesis says that they provide different relief. So mu one minus mu two is not equal to zero. There is a difference between them. The null hypothesis mu one minus mu two equals zero. Our alpha here is 0.05. 
Here we are dealing with a two-tailed test. So if we're looking at our decision rule here, what we're going to do is we're going to find a Z for alpha over 2, Z for alpha over 2, one's positive, one's negative. And so there's 95% here in the center, which means this is 0 0.025 and this is 0 0.025. Then what we're going to do is we're going to state our decision rule, which is we are going to reject the null hypothesis if our test statistic is greater than that positive critical value or our test statistic is less than that negative critical value. So either tail gets rejected or in general, if the P value is less than alpha. Oops, alpha, okay? All right, so now we need to perform the test. Now, the challenge with statistical packages and Z tests is because in the real world, you don't know the standard deviations of populations. If you go to jump, Python, all these, they don't do these tests. They do T tests, they don't do Z tests. Uh, because in real world application, you wouldn't know that the variability within the populations are certain things. So we'll do this by hand in Excel. Excel does not have a pre-built for this already. So how will we go about doing this? All right. We need our critical value and we need our test statistic. Our critical value, we are using the standard normal table. And remember, we're looking at probabilities and we are getting the Z score. So we need that normal inverse, which I can never remember what it is normal s inverse and then you just give it a probability the probability you can give it is 0.025 because remember it's doing everything to the left and we get a negative 1.96 so this is a negative whoop, negative 1.96 this is then a positive 1.96 because they're going to be the same on the two sides all right now we need a test statistic so that's where we come back to this formula, x bar minus x bar 2 minus the difference that we think, which is going to be 0 here, and then the square root of the standard deviation square divided by their ends and then added together and take the square root. So let's do this. Trying to show the formula at the same time. So how about this formula there? Excel here, get this to show. Okay, one step at a time, we need our information. So sigma was six. So we need six squared. And then our other sample, sigma was 6.8. So we need to square it. So that's gonna give us in our formula here, the sigma one squared and sigma two squared. Now let's divide each of those by their sample size. So we're gonna take that information and divide by the first one had a sample of 100, the second one had a sample of, what was that, 81? Okay, so now what we have here is sigma one squared divided by n and sigma two squared divided by n. Let's add those together and find the square root. So equals square root, open parentheses, that number plus that number. Okay, so we have now found the bottom of that formula. And where did it go? Okay, and the top of the formula is gonna be the difference between the two sample averages. So let's go here, x bar 85 and 86.2. 85 minus 86.2 and put an equals in front of it so that it will actually do the calculation all right so for our formula then kind of going a little low here equals the difference between the two samples divided by the square root we get negative 1.243 negative 1.243 puts us there 
So in this particular case, uh, is our test statistic more than the positive critical value? No. Is our test statistic less than the negative critical value? No. So we fail to reject the null hypothesis. And it is possible that the two um, sinus relief treatments are equal. Okay, so they're not different enough for us to detect a difference that would exist in the greater population. Okay, all right.